Loving our enemies means being like Christ, and it also means choosing to rise above. Rise above above any chaos, rise above hurtful situations, rise above any hate that others may bring our way because once again, we are striving to be more like Christ. Rise above. A few, few years ago, I went to, on a trip to Mexico with a group of friends and we were on the plane flying back. And at this point, we were flying over the state of Texas and there was a lot of turbulence. And by the way, I hate flying. Any bump, I'm like crying. But this was like really, really, really bad. Where other people were grabbing on each other. And I was like, oh Lord, here we go. The pilot came on the speaker and said, well, we're, there are storms right now in the area. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and he said, we are going to try to avoid some of the storms and major turbulence by going to a higher altitude. He said, then we would be, he said, at that time, we will feel the plane rising to the altitude. But when we rise, we will hopefully not feel anything else. And so I hear and feel the plane kick into like another gear and we started to rise higher. And we began rising and sometimes the plane would drop and we just kept rising. And it would drop again and we kept rising until we reached our altitude. And once we reached it, the ride was no longer as bad. But in order to avoid the turbulence that we were experiencing, we had to rise above it. I bet right now you may have a running list of enemies in your head. Now don't catch the Holy Spirit and say them out loud. <laughs> we may have lists of enemies in our head right now and we've categorized them as enemies for a reason. It is because these people who have one way or another communicated that they do not want the best for us. In one way, they have communicated that they want us to stay in turbulence, that they want us to stay in storms, that they want us to be afraid and fearful of the moment. Enemies are enemies for a reason because they delight in the moments when we are experiencing storms of life. But when we are striving to be more like Christ, we don't choose to stay with them in the turbulence, but we instead choose to rise above. Rise above the chaos. Rise above the chaos and reach a level of peace, reach a level of new perspective, and reach a level of happiness and love. Do not get caught up and solely focused on the turbulence that is around, but choose to rise above by showing compassion, by showing love toward all people and loving all people through the situation. Loving our enemies is being like Christ. It is rising above and it is looking to see Christ in all people, looking to see Jesus looking to see Jesus in every person. One of the funny things that my son likes to do is pretend that he cannot see something that is right in front of him. I don't know why he does that, but he just does it. It happens all the time. When I warm up food for him for dinner and, and I call him to come in the kitchen and get his food, even though the food is on the plate and the plate is on the counter, ready for him to take to the table, he will walk up to me and say, Mommy, where is my food? And I just look at him. I'm like, MJ, your food is right there on the counter. And then he goes, oh. And I just shake my head. The same thing happened yesterday. My daughter and I were in the same room and my son walked in and looked me straight in the eyes and with a straight face said, Mommy, where's Peyton? And at the same time, he was trying to avoid looking in her direction. And I just looked at him and I said, MJ, she's right there. And he was like, oh. In so many ways, he acts like that he doesn't see what is right in front of him. 
In many ways, he will look in all kinds of directions or will completely avoid looking in some areas and will tell me he doesn't see the very thing that he is looking for. Part of being a follower of Christ is choosing to genuinely look and see Christ in all people everywhere, in all directions. And this includes those who act like they have no concern for us, those who ignore us, those who push us away, and those who choose not to love us back. And it hurts. Sometimes when we encounter people and they hurt us, And even when we encounter people who may look like or talk like or act like the ones who have hurt us, our flesh may kick in, which will cause us to harden our hearts, which means that we will avoid looking to see people. When they're over here, we will look this way. When they're over here, we will intentionally look this way so that we do not have to encounter them because it hurts. Hardened hearts will cause us to look in every single direction, just like my son all around, when the person is right in front of us. But the problem with doing that is when we avoid other people, when we choose to have a heart in heart, when we choose to ignore other people, we are also doing the same to Christ. We're also doing the same to Christ. We cannot say that we love Christ and hate other people. We cannot say that we love Christ and choose to ignore other people. We cannot say that we love Christ and choose to look in every other direction except right in front of them, in their face. Christ is not calling us to be best friends with our enemies, but he is calling for us to live a life of forgiveness, a life of peace, a life of love. Christ is calling for us to put our faith in action. He wants us to listen and take heed to all of the teachings that we read about in the Bible and put those things into action and love other people. Loving our enemy Again, is allowing the Holy Spirit to enter in and transform our lives so that we can be better. Better people, better disciples, better neighbors, all for the glorification of God. Loving our enemy means showing compassion no matter who they are, where they are, or what they have done. Loving our enemies means sometimes putting them first, even when we don't want to, for the glory of God. Loving our enemy also means praying for them and blessing them, which Adam will go more into next week. Loving our enemy may be hard, but it is something that we are called to do because Christ commands it. Commands for us to be better in the world so that others will know and understand and feel what love looks like and hopefully be transformed in the moment by the love that we are showing them. There is too much going on in the world. There is too much hate going on in the world. And it's time to put out hope and peace and goodness so that we can overcome the hate. It is time to put out more love so that relationships can be mended, so that people can feel hope in times of hopelessness. It is time for us to rise to the occasion and be good disciples and show love. Show love. Show love. Last week, Adam gave a homework assignment. I didn't know we were supposed to be giving out homework, so here's yours. Be like Christ. It's simple, yet it can be so difficult. 
but be like Christ in all things. Be like Christ. Not just when we want to, not just when it feels good, but be like Christ in the moments where we struggle and it is so easy to choose the other direction. Choose to be like him and love the same way that he loves us. 